Hello there. Hello. How are you? <laughs> um, that that is Katie, and I'm Lily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. That was we smashed that. I feel yeah, we smashed that. that. It, especially <laughs> you know when Katie came in, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always Perfect. the tone of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well done well done thanks, thanks. thank you um, um, i really went for it on the accent <laughs> you, you did you did it was perfect it was perfect um so by the way uh that's tinneth who was me and that's elliot who was katie uh i'm not gonna point because i'm sure it's different on all sides so they are somewhere on the screen <laughs> there we go uh just and, and just somewhere the names are on the thing. You can see. Yeah, you can figure it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then we have we have Katie, the real Katie, and Hi. and and the real me. I'm a real boy, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who <laughs> knew? Whoops. Uh, Katie, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? I can do that. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome to all the films we judge. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, do you want to take over? <laughs> Yeah, I probably should. Yeah, you do it. Replacement yeah, you do it. You do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we have judged before. Today, we are talking about Andor. You've probably seen it in the title. But on this podcast, we chat everything, film, TV, whatever is wonderful and weird. And we, well, I mean, I say that we judge it. We don't really judge it. So, well, sometimes we judge it. But a lot of the times we love it. That was good. That was quite nice. Yeah, that was, that was really good. There's a lot more in there than I usually yeah. do. But also, <laughs> kind of like a half Casey, run. that's Lily K. We've got Thinnis and Elliot with us. Woo! Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's Introducing go. Well done. <laughs> well done. Uh, but um, sorry to correct you, but we actually are going to talk about Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, <gasps> yeah. My time to shine. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> I've definitely seen it. I have definitely <laughs> seen it. I mean, it's your favorite show. It's, this is it's an yeah. old bit. <laughs> I've definitely I not flipped through Raymond the channels. <laughs> I know. Having my breakfast. Yes, I think I think Peter Boyle is on it. That, that's <laughs> the extent of my knowledge. I don't. I I know the show very well. Clearly. I'm pretty I, sure I, I saw Everybody Loves Raymond on a streaming service recently, and I went no. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I saw it on like Disney Plus or something weird. It, it, it kind of popped oh. up. It was like I don't know. Yeah. Well, I guess I have no excuse now. I have to watch every <laughs> single episode. <laughs> yeah. 210 episodes. Uh-huh. Yep. You sure do. That's, um, the, that's for next time. Yeah. All right. Should we and get... <laughs> Should... Jokes aside, jokes aside, we, we have a very important topic to talk about. <laughs> it's serious uh, business. It's serious business. Uh, that's why the guys are here. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, Star Wars. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, actually talk about the topic we have for today, which is Andor. Uh, no, that just finished its run on Disney Plus for the first season, and uh, we are here to review it, discuss it, do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we're just gonna write, just jump right into it, and we're gonna start with the first question of what are your thoughts of it? Just all together, like all in all, just quickly give a quick review of what did you think, and we're gonna start with Tinnit. Uh, you know, it was, it was pretty good. I, I kind of <laughs> liked it. <laughs> no, it, 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 I mean, come on, it, it's amazing. It, it ruled. It's, it's amazing for everyone. You know, every single reason people say it is, it's fucking banger TV. <laughs> Incredible fair, stuff. Fair, okay. fair. Elliot. Yeah, I mean, it is easily the strongest Star Wars TV show. I'm going to say live action for now because I, I'm worried about recency bias and my feelings towards Star Wars Rebels. But I, yeah, I think certainly live action wise, it's it's the best Star Wars have had to offer on the TV front thus far. And in terms of overall, it's it's so far high up that list when you know you add in the films as well. If you haven't watched it yet watch Andor I don't know what you're doing not watching it it's really interesting actually the views for Andor have been comparatively really low people are yeah. watching it which is insane because it's the best things to it's... I of my opinion people... somebody who hasn't really been enjoying Star Wars that much for a while it's the best thing Star Wars has done 
Yeah. Yeah. Right up. Sorry, that's fat points. So I, I, do I even ask you, Katie? <laughs> That that's my thoughts. It's that's that's thing. your thoughts. Okay. 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 Fair. 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 Uh, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Uh, let's be fair. I'm not gonna say it's. Well, I do agree, but I also love Mando. So you know, for me, it's like Mando and Andor. Just mm. love them. Uh, obviously, two very different Star Wars approaches. Uh, so we're not even gonna compare them because there's not really point to it. Um. But we're gonna we're gonna go in the deep uh, to actually get to the point, which is very hard to ask because Katie wrote like a four page long. Look, essay I'm on not it. gonna write it really. It literally it was a word for me. I was just like I went. You to are see... the Nimek of this group. <laughs> yes, literally as I was writing it, I got part of the way through and I went, "I'm writing Nimek's man, Nimek's man." That's it. That feels like what's happening right now. Um, I don't. I don't want it. It's a. It's a. It's just. It's just a mess. But I came out of um seeing Glass Onion yesterday, um which was great by the way. Oh, yeah. If you can get to Probably see it within so this week that it's out, I would recommend. It's definitely worth going to cinema for. Um, I uh, and I went to this little cafe sort of thing nearby. Mm. I told Thinneth about it. He went to go. I went to the, it was the El Campo Lounge, um, and I sat down and I had myself some food and I asked the waiter for a pen because I forgot mine. <laughs> That and I just like rambled for like several pages about because I was like I need to figure out how to put my thoughts into words because otherwise this entire podcast would just be me going ah. <laughs> it didn't really work but I'll figure it out anyway okay that's fair that's fair uh I I have let's let's uh look at the things that might have been wrong with it if there was any like can you think of something that you didn't like I mean, there's there's only one minor thing, and it I think it was a lot of people's like one tiny thing they could have done a little more of, and that was just having more alien species in there. I think it was very very human heavy, which was a bit of a shame considering, especially considering the budget of the show already. Mm. You would have thought they could have got a few more alien species in there, but <clears throat> I think I think that's kind of a nitpick of Star Wars a bit anyway. And I know it was something that George Lucas always wished he had gotten more of in the original trilogy as well, which yeah. is why in those special editions you see things added in a bit more. But yeah, I mean, you know, not necessarily it's, well. It's, yes, not necessarily well. <laughs> but it's you know, I think for me that's a tiny gripe, um, a tiny bordering moderate gripe. Fair, fair. Didn't it, or Katie? Anything? I still need to come up with things. <laughs> you don't need to come up with anything. You could just say it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, because it's hard. Because like I love so much of it. That it's hard to come mm. up with negative stuff. Because it's just, I don't know. I mean, there are you know little things here and there. I suppose. Like, I guess it's mostly just kind of um, structural things with like some of the characters. I guess kind of taking a backseat more so than others. Like I think Cyril, my boy. <laughs> does take a bit of a heavy backseat for most of the season which i kind of get but at the same time it's like i don't know he spends a lot of time eating cereal he when does. he could have been doing stuff so i don't know that sort of stuff is a little bit wonky but i don't know other than that like i still love it there's yeah the only things i would say are things that i'm reticent to like complain about because it's the first mm. season and I feel like they have a whole load of time for that second season to address a lot of this stuff. It's mm. things for me like I did feel a bit like the um Cassian's like backstory got a little dropped as it went on because like the yeah. opening to the, yeah, the yeah. show is him trying to find his sister and then it kind of understandably goes away because yeah. other things yeah. take precedent and all that sort of stuff. Um and I don't think that they've quite discussed enough the fact that he was stolen from his home and yeah. the like ramifications of that but I also feel like that there's space for that sort of complexity to also come in in season two so I'm a bit like I don't really want to you know say it's bad it's just like it, I feel like it's something that does need to be addressed at some point and I hope that they do mm. that's it <laughs> Just, I really okay. forgot about the, that opening storyline of him finding his sister. I completely forgot about Literally that. Literally, the yeah. first <laughs> sequence is him. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Morlana yeah. trying to find his sister. It's a catalyst Jeez. for the whole rest of the show. 
of course kind of disappears. It is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, what do we think about the argument that uh, it shouldn't be titled Ender because, you know, uh, people are saying that it wasn't really his TV show, TV series? Well, they're wrong because it is his show. It's just that he's not in it as much as I think people were expecting him to be. Yeah. So we don't agree. No. <laughs> No. Yeah, okay. no. I mean, all all roads still led still led north. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That was. I would argue that Andor uh, covers um, not just Cassian but Marva as well. Yeah, and like one of my favorite things was like the addition of new characters mm. you know, because there are so many you know, compelling arcs and you know complexities to everybody. Mm. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just I like the balance that they struck. Okay, yeah. so too. All right, let's Did get you... into the good stuff. Then. Hang on a second. Did you have anything yes. that you wanted to, that that was like a gripe of yours? It was. <laughs> it was because uh, there were times when I was like, "Is this really about him?" I, you know, I we do get back to him uh, from time to time, and and you know, obviously everyone is looking for him, uh, but at times it felt like like you know, where is the main character of the show that you know we use the title his name you use his name as a title and everything and and sometimes it felt like that we didn't get as much of him as i would have liked as much as i loved all the storylines i i felt like it wasn't in balance i would say i you know when i get a show that that was our critic with book of boba fett obviously mm. uh and when i get a show that is titled after uh someone i'm like where are they? <laughs> then, yeah, like, you know, I'd yeah. argue that in this instance, I did feel it occasionally where I was kind of like, okay, but I kind of would like to see more Cassian. But yeah. I feel like Cassian is a character because he's a spy. He kind of exists, kind of back from the front line. He's not the hero. He's just the sort of fulcrum of the entire piece. Mm. He, he got everything swings on him, even mm. if he's not out front and center doing stuff loudly. Um, and I think that the show kind of reflects that in that, yes, he's not like on screen all the time, but it's all yeah, about it's, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even like, you know, being on screen uh, all the time, but, you know, as you said it as well, like they start with that backstory and then it just disappears. Like, I don't really understand then why did we need it then? I'm sure it's going to come back in season two, or at least I. Well, I mean, it was so. it was a it was a start point. I think, as Katie said, because, um, you know, him in that bar and and around that that area looking for his sister meant that he killed the two cops, which meant then Cyril went after him, which meant then Luthen heard about him, which you know, and it kind of all spiraled from there. So yeah. I kind of I get what you're saying, but yeah, I mean, Katie was right in saying how that that starting objective spiraled the rest of the show due to the actions that took over but i think also and you and you're right in that we had that similar gripe with book of boba fett and i think with book of boba fett i'm still trying to figure out how those mando episodes bar them arriving on tatooine to help Bob, Bob, boba fett no, it didn't really advance the character of boba fett whereas i think when you when when every character in Andor, you look at Cyril and you look at Deirdre, they were both after Andor. Like it mm. was Cyril's one motivation was to find Andor. Yeah, so I yeah. kind of think that it, you know, it still kind of links back in. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I, 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 but I agree. One kind of... But but I also I also then do agree with you that hopefully season two does pick back up on Andor trying to find his sister. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even necessarily need him to like be actively looking for his sister. I just want them to address it because I feel like yeah, even yeah, if yeah. they just yeah. had a, like a conversation where he's like, because th there is a throwaway line from someone I can't remember who who basically goes, "You got to stop. She's dead." Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, that's and I it. would and... like a, like a uh, like an acknowledgement on his behalf of going. I recognize now that there's no yeah. point looking for her. I also don't think that there would be any need for her to come into the story at all at this point. Um, oh, obviously, but you know, like given the fact that he he goes back uh, once he hears that you know his mother is dead, mm. uh, I don't think that he would just leave the whole sister 
thing behind because someone said that like you know she's gone you should forget about her and no she's, and he's I, like I, yeah, okay <laughs> it's like you no, know I, it, I i don't mean it like that so much i just mean like other things have taken importance to him or he's like something something has made him it, like the events that have taken place in the story so far i think would be enough for, for him to to kind of clear any fog on like or hope for on that front I mean, hope feels like a, a, a mean way of putting it but like just like a sense of like oh here we are in reality everything's shit actually here and um, i have the there are people around me where i can be doing things in the present moment yeah. instead of chasing something from the past um I'd also, Obviously, but you know, I don't yeah. think he would leave it like that. That's what I'm trying no. to get at. No, like, no, it's so. based on his whole personality and everything in the show. And, uh, True. and he doesn't leave people behind. You know, I, I feel like that they need to address this somehow in season two more mm. because I, I don't think he would just be like, oh, yeah, she's probably not worth it. Like, fuck it. I don't think that, that that's a him thing. So, yeah, no, let's hope so. Uh, Tinit, any thoughts? Um, just in general. <laughs> just in general. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a couple of thoughts. Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the whole sister thing was like it was. It was interesting. It was an interesting bit of you know character stuff for him. But I think ultimately, I mean, he was a child and he was taken away. Yeah. And like you know, ten, fifteen years passed. So I mean, I think it's more him holding onto his past rather than like an active like you know thing that they're setting up for season two more than like you know because like I mean. It could be, you know, they could bring her in, but I feel like it's more just a case of him, you know, constantly being on the move and never, you know, having a place to settle down. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just like, you know, because like that's his whole thing, right? Just that, you know, he's constantly having to look after himself. Um, and then gradually that kind of ties into his, you know, path into becoming a rebel and like over the course of the season and also, you know, probably season two and then into Rogue One. Um, so, I mean, I like the sister stuff, but yeah, that's kind of my sort of viewpoint on that. It's, it's just like not, to me, it's not as important, I guess. Represents home, really, in, 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 in uh, overall, mm. and he doesn't really have one. I mean, I know he like he lives on Ferrex and, and all that stuff, but he's kind of gotten so many things taken away from him in terms of his identity. Like he he can't even say that he's actually from he's actually Canari. Yeah. Um. Uh. The, the his home when he was there was ravaged and ruined already. And then he was taken away from it to with people he didn't know, who did eventually become his family. But like, he's always presented as sort of the outsider on the whole thing, and he he there's nothing stable for him to kind of keep feet on. Um, so I think that that, that whole opening, uh, you know, three episodes is mostly about introducing that concept that yeah. this is a man who doesn't really have anything. I mean, he does have things, but they're not, they're kind of, I don't know what the word They're in like flux, I guess. They're in flux. That's probably a good way of putting it. Yeah. He, they're like, um, they're not entirely stable. Um, yeah. They're important and they're, they're real and, and all that sort of stuff, but they're, they're not um, deeply rooted as it is like, like Marva is so deeply rooted in Ferex. Yeah. 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 Um, he doesn't have quite so many deep roots he has them in people he doesn't really have them in places i think that's probably a better way of putting it yeah yeah okay. that's five points all right let's jump on to the good stuff which is <laughs> which is the, whole right. the show. Right. just everything <laughs> just everything um um i don't really have any questions i'm more interested in like general what did we really like and you know whatever you want to point out that i would just I need just leave it up to the crowd that we have well, here tonight. I was thinking we could talk about it in like sets of like the arcs because there's a couple. There's like yeah. I have about five arcs in the show, three big ones and then a couple of small ones. Um, so we got the first arc, which I referred to as Ferex, and then I put Escape in brackets. So that's episode <laughs> one, two, three, three, where it's basically him trying to get off Ferex and and uh, you know get away. Um, and then I have Aldani, obviously, which is mm -hmm. four through six. Mm -hmm. I have fallout which is just episode seven which arguably is the beginning of the narkina um arc but i think is is separate i think it stands on its own um and then you have the arkina sorry narkina <laughs> narkina five arc which is um uh, eight through ten um in my opinion the best arc <laughs> it is the best arc um and then uh uh the final one return marvel's funeral in brackets 
11 through 12. Um, so we could, if we wanted to structure it in any way, I feel like this is probably the easiest way. We could start with uh, uh, all the setup, which I think we kind of went over just now, to be honest. But if anybody yeah. else has anything else to say about the, those opening three episodes, I did. The one of the criticisms that I did see online was the idea that those first three episodes were quite slow, mm-hmm. which I don't agree with. Yeah, no. I think comparatively no. speaking, they feel a bit slow because so much stuff happens later on, but I think they're appropriately placed for the beginning of the story because they are sort of set up and you need set up in order to yeah. fully, um, you know, follow through with your, your action in storytelling. But um, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're right. And I think they, they play an important setup for a couple of reasons. Mm. Um, reason number one is it's setting up the Cassian that we're involved with right now, because obviously the only version we've seen of the character is this rebel spy who is just is just ready to do whatever needs to be done in order to get the mission the mission accomplished. But then turns, you know, kind of full, all right, let's lead a rebellion, hope is on our side sort of guy. You know, he has that mini arc there in Rogue One. But I think it's kind of important setup to see that, you know, he's just he's just a guy that that wants to find his sister and and uh yeah he's that will to kill is is always is is kind of already there like he's he's more than happy to do that if it if if it needs be it's 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 an almost lawless galaxy at the moment while the empire are taking over so um yeah and then i think also the the second thing that it sets up well is is just the structuring of the show on a whole that mm-hmm. you know we're we're not just going to go into an episode um, you know, like with Aldani, we're not just going to go into Aldani and, and the heist is immediately. No, no, no. Mm. We've, we've got to set the heist up. You, you need to understand who these people are that are going to be on the heist. You need to understand what their plan is so that when the plan goes wrong, you, 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 you're, you're with them in the urgency of, oh, crap, what do we do? Yeah. So I think I think that that, that, that opening arc does a good job of just, yeah, setting Andor up and setting and setting Andor up. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> Fair. that's fair yeah definitely i mean like because i was thinking like when i saw you know those criticisms come up about the first three episodes i was like really like the idea that you know people would find the you know the whole art kind of slow um because it's like i mean compared to like you know most i guess star wars shows like maybe it is a bit slow but i mean it's a 12 episode series and like you know each thing is split into arcs which granted you know, if you don't know that going in, that you know the first three episodes are one big story arc, then maybe it's a bit weird and confusing. But um, even still, like I loved just like getting kind of immersed in the world with the characters and you know actually feeling the world, right? Because like what sets this show mm-hmm. apart for me is just like the tactile nature of everything. Mm-hmm. Like it's you know filmed on location, like they you know I mean obviously they're CGI, but like that stuff is kind of you know it's not like the priority, it's not the focus. It, the focus is on the characters and the real sets and whatever's you know whatever keeps like the audience kind of focus in on, on the important stuff. Um, and just like, you know, like I loved the opening scene in the rain, you know, like on that planet, um, you know, cause you just, you just feel how tense it is for Andor, for everybody involved. Um, and that feeling I like, carries across, not just like the first three episodes, but like the entire season. Mm. And I just, I loved just like the depth of the show in that regard as well. So, yeah. Mm. And then everything goes to shit, episode three. <laughs> It does, awesome. yeah. but that's 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 what you want, right? It's like yeah. I think people um, mistake slow for quiet, and I don't yeah. think quiet is bad because um, I think quiet uh, you can have time to kind of get your roots in, as you said, kind of feel the tactile nature of this. I think I, I read a, a thing from the apparently the production designer uh, came at the whole you know design of the show from the perspective of somebody doing a period drama as opposed to trying to like make sci-fi so it all feels very much like and it's it's one of the i remember i had this one of the, my massive gripes with the, the cowboy bebop right revo- um uh live action series is that the whole thing just felt cheap like none of it felt like it was like it felt like people who put a bunch of stuff in for a set as opposed to like mm. a place where people live. This feels like a place where people live. Like, there is like, you, I do find myself multiple times being like, oh, this just, like the, the, the suspension of disbelief is so easy because uh, everything feels so like real and, and tactile, mm. as, as you said. Um, yeah, I didn't. Just genuine. 
just gen- yeah, genuine yeah. for sure. Hey, Lily, you got any thoughts? I mean, I I think you already said everything, so <laughs> I just agree. To be fair with it, with with all of it, but uh, I did feel like it was a bit slower than the rest. But uh, oh, it's not worse for sure. Yeah, I didn't mind it at all. But like, I don't mind feel about Tim. Listen, okay, if so. you if you get people into snitches, yeah, what's coming to them? <laughs> That's an asshole. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know. Like, I think that's what they tried to do. Is that like you know, uh, because he for me he clearly does it out of jealousy. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. he does it out of jealousy, and what I think kind of is a twisted form of care because he thinks he's protecting her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like you know, I was instantly like, oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> 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 like, fuck you, Tim. Uh, I still was a bit shook by the fact that. To just kill him, like you know, all said right. and done, well, and that was fascism. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was that's like, another oh, thing about oh, the show. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. Characters yeah. just die. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very dark, but it's it's real. Yeah, the the all of the shots of the the like um anything anybody who gets shot is like it's really because it's like it's one shot and they're just dead and that's it yeah. and you're like ah yeah. oh. <laughs> like that girl in on Canary I was like holy shit uh huh like that, that was sad but. Yeah, it was, it was very real. Anthony, I do have a question. Just this is like a, a um structural thing, and I'm just I was it was the thing I was a little confused about, and I didn't know if I was like misinterpreting it. They mentioned the mining disaster on 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 um Kinari. Mm. It was part of the reason why yeah, everything kind of blew up there. And then they also referenced that everybody died. Are those two different things? Because it feels like there was because it was clearly a mining planet. But the mine, like you, the quarry that you see, is clearly abandoned. So it seems mm-hmm. like everything blew up beforehand, and then there was this second instant where the ship came down, and then uh, they tried to strip it, but uh, the one of them died, and then he stays to you know smash the place to pieces, um, and then he gets taken by Clem and, and Marva because it clearly the Empire is coming back to get it. And then was there the genocide of the rest of their people? I just, I, that lost me a little bit. I was a bit confused by the timeline. I, yeah, I have no it idea. It's a bit confusing, yeah. It is a bit um, confusing. Okay. That's, like, as long as I wasn't just being silly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did see a theory that like all of the, like the whole tribe are uh, children of the miners there. See, this is like, what I was thinking. Done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It but seems they like, really, like they... outright confirm it. Which... No. And I don't think that's such a bad thing because the show's yeah, clearly yeah. doing it. It's eff- making an effort to not just like spell things out for the audience. But the impression that I did get was that these are all kids who were the children of the miners, and that whatever mining um, catastrophe happened killed all of the adults, and then they all had to look after themselves. And then this second thing happened, and they came back and killed everybody else, essentially. But, but I don't also, know. Also, like I think it takes place during the Republic era, so even. That, that you know makes things more confusing <laughs> honestly it's like wait hang on so this is the republic that did this um so i don't know but i'm sure there'll Any be a dancers. book somewhere that explains <laughs> it. <laughs> all right anyway, also uh, b2 emo yeah <laughs> best character uh, katie let's jump ahead mm-hmm. aldani 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 what do you think aldani <laughs> <laughs> So I I I I loved Eldani because I think it did it it did a lot of things brilliantly. A the slow burn that we've talked about, but it 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 really introduced us to this new set of characters as well. Because especially what happens to a lot of them, you <clears throat> a lot of other TV shows could easily throw those characters away very easily, hmm. and yet we care about Nimek. I mean, Nimek I think was kind of the standout secondary mm-hmm. character from that art. Oh, yeah. I mean Ve- both Vel and and and, and Cinta yeah. are great. I think they're both both great characters. Vel especially like the double life she leads I think was really interesting. And the, but, the uh, conflict in her about that cuz yeah. she's so on board with the rebellion but she's also like I have hired. I have yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well this is it and, and you know and she has she has privilege and she has privilege through her, through her family which we later find out as well which mm-hmm. I thought was a wonderful twist. Yeah, it was good. Um mm-hmm. But 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 Nimek somehow just I, I I think what this show does really well and it and it began to be and it be, and it really was drawn out in the Aldani arc was just capturing 
how different people feel about fascism mm -hmm. and about and 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 the lengths that they're willing to go for it as well. The fact that Nimek, he's not just there to to rob to to, to take part in this heist. He's written a whole manifesto. He's already thinking past this heist. He's already thinking, what is the larger picture? How do we, you know, the, you know, this is what's happening. These are the ways that we can take it down. This is what it feeds on. This is how it will implode on itself. Like everything is kind of, he's already having all these thoughts. And I just think that was really wonderful. And it just speaks to the larger world. And then we see a lot of those things get drawn out more when we go to the prison um, and how everyone feels there, you know, and how Kino is in opposition, but everyone else is like, oh yeah, but we could do something if we wanted to. And 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 that starts now in Aldani. And then one other thing I think is that having the empire building their structures on, on spiritual land, on land that does belong to someone else. And, you know, when you have people online that are like, no, Star Wars isn't political. It doesn't do any of that, blah, 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 blah. Where, you know, when Return of the Jedi was literally just like, here's the Vietnam War. Yeah. And and you know, and 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 Tony Gilroy's doing that again. He's picking straight straight up where Lucas left off and and you know, building on sacred lands and 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 the way that they're just like, oh yeah, they'll do their silly ritual and we'll just let them do it and yeah. then they'll then they'll F off and then we'll see them again next year. And I just think that was it just showed the pompous nature of the Empire. And the arrogance that when the heist, you know, when they pull the heist off, you're just like, of course they pulled the heist off because the Empire would never think anyone would actually do that. Mm. Which is what gets set up at the end of the, the first arc where, where yeah. it loosens this sort of like, well, how did you do this? He goes, I just walked in. They so yeah. up themselves, they don't recognize yeah. when someone like me gets in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. And it's, and, 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 and that goes back to, to 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 a new hope the fact that that you know the rebels launch x-wings and y-wings against the death star and the empire are like it's just some stunt fighters like we'll just swap them down and, and we'll go blow this planet up easy no worries um it just it just aldani for me was the start of by the way this is this is what george lucas was doing <laughs> and now yeah. we're doing it in the 21st century mm-hmm one of my little uh, season highlights I wrote down was seeing the eye and then when, and the representation of yep. the natives because I think it's really it, it's quite important that the natives themselves when they are actually represented on screen are so um they they're treated with such respect by the story by the filmmaking yeah. like they, they the empire are making fun of them but the the film the filmmaking and everything we see of them is decidedly done with respect and a lot of mm -hmm. reverence for the things that they're clearly like they, this is a massive pilgrimage that they go on every um seven years or something like that wasn't it i can't remember yeah, specifically can't remember. um um and it really it really shows that with a lot of and it it's the face it's them weeping is the there's the it goes across the sky mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff that i found it very moving and it's just beautiful like that whole sequence with the, with the the actual the eye happening is genuinely stunning which is what you yeah. want this bit after you've spent two episodes setting up that it's this incredible thing that happens only x amount of years of, uh, um and all that sort of stuff so uh, the visual effects were fun. did a really good job <laughs> <laughs> yeah in it yeah i mean you know speaking of the eye like i would kill to see that on the big screen Mm. Yeah. shame because like god imagine just seeing that i mean it would have been amazing but but yeah no i i love the aldani arc it was so fantastic um i mean i'm just like going over the kind of plot synopsis but yeah i mean i just i just love seeing um cassian's interactions with the group and mm. how you kind of like get like different um points of view with them different like anxieties that are built into like you know who they are um and just kind of like you know being like really unsure like who is actually good who is actually bad like you know whose side is everyone on like that sort of thing you know it, it was it was fun it was it was tense um mm. and then you know the fucking ending with um with skiing mm. i mean oh my god yeah like, i did not see that coming i got jump scared by the shot it, it, it was really yeah, took me out i was kind of like yeah. um i was expecting i mean the the betrayal i was kind of like okay this makes sense it was the shot that really it was like oh my yeah, god yeah, yeah. Killed it. It so yep. it's just yeah. out of nowhere so I, I just 
yeah, I just love that you know the climbing, the you know the building up of Cassian's character in that regard um, is very fun. Uh, but then also, um, Nemec's death was heartbreaking. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was because like you know it's like the moment that they took off, I was like, oh fuck, and then it happened. Like the thing you know slammed into him, and I was like, oh god damn it, this is this is exactly <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen. Of course, um, yeah, and yeah, it's it's brutal uh because i i mean that's another thing like you know we'll get into it in like the um prison arc but i also love that you know that like sometimes shit like this just happens you know like mm. you know um you know but sometimes characters just die like people just die um because of things like this and it's not you know a grand like you know bigger than life thing it's just an accident um and it's, it's, it you know, it's very real <laughs> It's very real. It's very sad, but and um, very annoying. <laughs> like he gets yeah. through the whole thing without getting shot or anything, and then oh, and then boom. Oops. Okay. Fantastic. I was so annoyed with that. I was like, <laughs> you can't do this. <laughs> like, thank you guys. In the meantime, Cyril is just eating cereal. He is eating <laughs> cereal. He's the eating cereal. Time. Yeah. And I it love must be. That. I I will say this. I want to try the cereal because. It it looked tasty. I was like, mm. I mean, it must be good, said, right? It said, must um, be good. The actor who played him said there's something like it tastes like dreams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. I don't want to try it. <laughs> oh no, it was a really good quote. It really made me laugh. It was like, I did. It was very funny. Um, yeah, I think one of the things I did write in my little um word vomit because uh, to your point about Nemec's manifesto is I did write that um it's such an important. It's like it is a pivotal. Ca- I said, uh, I'll read it out. Shall I? <laughs> um, Go ahead. Mimic's manifesto is such a pivotal counterpoint to all of this. It is he needed to exist to remind us just what the empire is, else we might forget. He needed to do. Uh, he needed to die to remind us of the horror. That's what I wrote. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because he's purity in that whole um, thing. Everybody else has doubts or conflicts, or, or apart oh, yeah. from Cinta, I guess. Uh, but like. He is, uh, the center is hard. He's optimism. Yeah. Um. Yeah. On on the whole thing, and it it's not killing him. Isn't killing optimism. It's just reminding us of like the gravity of the on. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I also love that. Like, I mean, we haven't talked too much about him, but I love that. Um. Nemec is kind of a reflection of Luthan in a lot of ways. Um. Of like maybe what Luthan used to be. Um. At the beginning, right? True. Just kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. That like, sense of it. kind of optimism. Um, before you know, he realized what the sacrifices are and everything. Because um, I just I love the scenes you know where Luthen has to put on a mask and has to you know go to Mon Mothma. Oh, sorry, he has to um, meet with Mon Mothma and they have to discuss things in broad daylight. Like all that stuff is fantastic. Yeah. It's so yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, just the mask that they have to put on. This is really the arc cool. where we get properly introduced to Mon Mothma as well, right? If I remember correctly. I think um, so. Yes, uh, and yes, yeah. she is fascinating. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, actually, who plays her is I, th- there's such an elegance to her that I think she pulls off incredibly well. And I think that her arc and everything she has to deal with is is some of the darkest stuff in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but it kind of a lot of this section of her arc is just sort of setting her up and and all the the pressures that she's under, all the you know the interesting. Um, textual stuff happens a bit later on. We can talk about that next. Do you have? You've been very quiet, Lily. Do you have any thoughts that you want to do? <laughs> I'm just the observer today. No, uh, you, you know, I think once again, you basically said everything. Um, there's, I... there's some more stuff. There's what else is there? <laughs> He's trying to find me something to talk about. <laughs> well, we've not—I mean, we've not spoken about the introduction of the ISB yet either. So, That's oh true. yes, go for it, Lily. Mm-hmm. Me? Oh, oh, about do the you ISB. have thoughts on the ISB? <laughs> I, I don't know. Do I have Jolson in? I—I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I didn't write anything down. This is the first time that happens because I had oh, a classmate same. thing. <laughs> yesterday and i am so tired that i am i I have to turn on my brain properly so that's why i'm mostly just listening i do have thoughts on on my boy uh i was gonna say i think if we if if you've not i mean it doesn't do you have any thoughts on the isb that you wanted to talk about elliot as you were the one who brought it up but i i mean yeah I, i i the isb is something i've been waiting for in in live action star wars i have to say because they they feature a little bit in star wars rebels 
but not anywhere near the extent that they feature here. And it's always been a part of the empire that's fascinated me the most because they, you know, yes, they they investigate think threats to the empire, but they also investigate threats within the empire as well. And um, I'd love to hopefully see some of that in, in season two because just the idea that, you know, the empire doesn't trust itself as well and yeah. that it will investigate its members you know and and rightfully so i mean you know it's so it's so large and we have you know we 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 have seen defectors left right and center so it's not it's no surprise but i ju- i just what i love most about it is it's it's that political one upmanship within the empire that i think is so fascinating and to anyone that has read the the not the original Thrawn trilogy, which is part of Legends. I mean, there's there's kind of three Thrawn trilogies now that Timothy Zahn has written, but it's the middle trilogy. And the first book um shows Thrawn, how Thrawn was found by the Empire, um, and then his rise up to the rank of Grand Admiral through that. Mm. And it's just so fascinating the politicalness of it all and how how the other admirals and generals everything they do to try and and stop Thrawn rising up the ranks mm-hmm. it's, it's just brilliant to watch and how he just masterminds them all and and you just got to see that here how everyone was trying to bring down this lovely lady here <laughs> and she just masterminded them all do you know what I mean like it was just great to watch I just and I just love I I, I just I love that that we're, we're you know everyone's playing everyone all the time and who's going to come out on top, which is, is, you know, when you've got this organization that is so, well, it's not even an organization, this, this political fascist superpower, (laughs) superpower, but then you get to see the infighting and the bickering and the, and I'll stop at nothing, nothing to rise above the ranks quicker than you. Yeah. It's it's fascinating. She's so interesting to me because she is, there is, I, obviously she's awful. But there's also a sense of respect that you kind of have for her because she's so good at her job. Like she's mm. the only person who really looks at the whole picture and is actually like paying attention. So there's almost a sense of like you you, you kind of forget yourself a little bit and, and yeah. go, oh, but like if you did this and this, then you'd get to this conclusion. Um, yeah. because it's satisfying to the brain to be able to do that. But then you're like, nah, no, wait, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I was like fully rooting for her for like good like three episodes, and I was like, oh wait, shit, <laughs> I shouldn't but, be doing but this. The, and this is something that the show does really well because even you know while we're sort of coming out the end of the Eldani arc, the, do you remember that Imperial officer who was in in the wall? He was at the top of the wall in that little control room, mm. and and he's the one that ends up putting the alert through, getting the alert through that 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 the rebels are in. And I find myself going kind of like rooting for him to 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 figure it out and and hit the button because in the episode previous they'd had because they take the time they'd taken the time to set his character up as well and to give him some you know well characterization the fact mm. that he was excited to see the eye and and everything and 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 then so and I think that's what just the show does brilliantly that yeah like Finn if you are rooting for Dedra even though she's an Imperial ISB agent, supervisor. You're just like, what is going on? <laughs> There's a great quote from um, Janice Goth uh, that, where she was talking about it. Um, she was saying, at the beginning, you kind of root for her because she's a woman in a man's world. And by the end, you realise that she's just a fascist in a world yeah, of fascists. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, God, oh, I love when actors are smart about the roles that they're <laughs> Yeah, yeah, massively. Yeah, good. Um, well, the we've got the fallout uh, from Aldani, which uh, I think is important to bring up because there's two things. One of them's a bit superfluous; the other one's actually a bit more, um, you know, meaningful and deep. The first one is the the, the introduction of the the K robot, which actually, like, honestly, got me in the gut. I really wasn't expecting. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> the face I made when he kind of pulled into the screen. I was like, oh my god, it's the body robot. I don't know shit about any of this sort of stuff. Really, I just was like, "Hey, he's in Rogue One," and that that was enough <laughs> for me to be excited. <laughs> um, the second thing is the way that Cassian gets arrested is oh, yeah. very um poignant uh, and 
you know, re reflective of a lot of things that are going on in our society nowadays. I think it really, considering this is a Mexican man being arrested for doing nothing, that yeah. the, the the context is there. <laughs> like, the, the, well, and it, and it, and, it, and it echoed what happened to Clem as well. You know, his yeah. sort of mm -hmm. almost lynching. Do you know what it, I mean? I mean, like, it was oh, a lynching. Yeah, to the yeah. Which, <laughs> which which is just like again when people say Star Wars is not political, and it just literally like yeah. and a, a lot of people like I've seen that a few people actually had, a, had an issue with what happened to Clem, and I, I can mm. understand it because it is it's a difficult image. Yeah. It's a really difficult image, and if you, if you ever you see videos from that actual time in America. Like you can't like I I can't watch them you know and I and I doubt a lot of people can, um and it's probably where bringing in a few more alien races might have helped a little bit yeah. because you can you can get a little more distance from it, but but you're right like it, you know it 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 it's again just Tony Gilroy perfectly mirroring our world and just saying yeah this happens by the way people yeah this happens <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because I found that that whole sequence was so like nauseating to to then, to watch. But then not even just getting arrested, get, getting given six years for just six being years, in the yeah. wrong place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, for just be being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about my boy. Let's go on to Nokina <laughs> Five. This, yeah, I, when I said this is the best character. line in the series, I'm not fucking lying. It's so good. Go on, Lily. You, you might go as well Lily. take the lead on this one. Yeah, go for it. Hi. Uh, first of all, here's a little did you know uh, fact. Um, his name, Kino, is German for cinema. Yep. Yes, it is. Oh. Yep. yep. Yeah, he didn't did enough. <laughs> I, well, I don't, I, I don't I know. I, di I didn't I'm put lost. those two things together. I just, I was like, that is a thing I knew. I just didn't really think about it in the context of the character. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, you know, well done. <laughs> I like thoughts like this. I'm like, okay, well done, well done. Mm -hmm. First of all, let me just put it out there. Uh, when I watched that episode, and obviously the whole concept is horrifying that you can get electrocuted. Uh, on the fucking floor mm. if you do something wrong it's like oh, oh my god when they introduced it I was like no <laughs> no I don't want this to exist anytime soon <laughs> anywhere it's just awful uh, mm. and then we go down obviously to taking Cassian down and then he turns around and I was like <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I literally couldn't stop screaming I was like oh my god it's Andy Serkis ah! obviously Andy Serkis already part of Star Wars before this um, mm. but we don't talk about them too much because it's like <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm so glad he got a second chance to come back and you know be actually himself we know he's the king of mocap and, and all that stuff but like we like to see his face He's he's a great actor and he's he, he's so good in this as well. He's so freaking good in this, and I I love that he was the counterpart of of Cassian uh, yeah. in the whole three episodes that that you know he he was in. Uh, I I loved how Cassian realized that he needs to convince uh, Kino to move as well because otherwise it's not gonna work. Uh, because obviously his whole mindset is so dead set on this thing that if I do this and if I, you know, finish my thing, they're just going to let me out and I'm going to be fine. So therefore, there's no reason for me to to go against the whole thing. And then once he starts to realize that, hold on, that's not what's happening. <laughs> it's like, I, I love the switch. Like, he's still terrified. And I think Andy just did a fucking amazing job. Of, of showcasing the whole emotional uh, turmoil that he he goes through, like uh, when when Cassian tells him to to actually talk to the prisoners and and tell them what to do, uh, the whole struggle at the beginning, like oh oh my god, I don't know if I should do like it's it's still there, like I shouldn't go against this because what's gonna happen afterwards uh, if if we are not successful, like you can just see his his whole toes going around and uh, and then and then he turns around and he's like yeah. You know what? Fuck it. And he gives one of the best. I'm gonna say one of the best speeches. <laughs> there are the a lot of great speeches. <laughs> yeah. That oh, is they... definitely one of them. 
<laughs> but it's it's definitely one of them. And and I loved how he just you know pumps himself up more and more as he talks about it. And and you know yeah. it's it's just such a fucking great. Uh, character arc for him and that's why I fucking hate that he says that I can't swim and that's all we know and I'm like <laughs> but yeah but as I mentioned to you uh, after we got through that that is representative of like the whole season because we did the idea is that we just don't get to see what happened to people yeah. we don't get to see what happened to Cassie and sister I mean we did get to see what happened to Nemec but like it's in the similar sort of vein in that it, it's like the people just either they they likely just don't survive like yeah. it, they, these they, they get picked off and it's 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 um faceless and terrible and there's no like um uh, it's, it's still fucking annoying <laughs> it is annoying <laughs> but that's <laughs> the point yeah <laughs> i know it's the point but it's fucking annoying <laughs> it's like ah oh, fuck you guys uh i and it did say and you know we we might see you know again so i'm like please I'm just so hopeful that it's fucking yes, please. Uh, I love the uh, the drawing that you send. Then he's just floating. <laughs> he's just got a little floaty. It's fine. It's, 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 it's like, oh yes, fine. please. I I like that idea so much. I'm just gonna uh, handle it as that's the truth, and that's what happened. <laughs> the thing uh, is, it it is ambiguous enough that that he could have found a way off. Like that, yeah. it feels. It feels like it I feels, was talking yeah, to yeah. a friend of mine who was like, "You can't." She was like, "You can't tell me there was no like boats on this entire yeah, thing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, "Yeah, you know, what? it does make sense that there might be something that he could have so, yeah, found yeah. in some way, shape, or form." But the the I I just think it's like it was so heartbreaking and narratively perfect to watch he didn't give it he doesn't get a chance to try and help him that's the thing he just gets not yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah, don't yeah. get to see him again and it's like oh, <laughs> oh god uh i i also like these episodes because i think i think this is where we saw uh so guerrero again in one of the yeah. episodes yes yeah and and i one of you know i'm just gonna lines. put it out there like forest Whitaker is my other big thing I love for S. Whitaker so much so when, when he showed up I was like oh. his... because we didn't get enough from him <laughs> like, you know? I honestly think he, one of his lines is one of my favorite because there's a lot I mean there's a lot of dialogue in this season that I absolutely yeah, yeah. adored but yes. him and, and Lucen talking to each other about Antor, um Krieger and, and the decision to sacrifice him and all that yeah, sort yeah, of stuff yeah. um, where he's like um, uh, he said let's call it war and I went fuck yeah. <laughs> so raw <laughs> Oh, it's good. Good. I'm so like, good. Oh. <laughs> it's another one of the many points of the season where it's just it's like ah! <laughs> there's no other way to articulate this i just want to yell yeah yeah uh, so yeah the whole you know this whole prison arc is just brilliant in my mind especially because the whole thing of them doing this very monotone uh, uh, job to put these things together that they don't even know what it is. Uh, mm. It's its just, you know, I think it, it builds so much uh, just, I don't even know how to say it. It's, it's uh, huh. anxiety, I guess, in a way. Yeah, it's, no, it, the, it, the, it, the tension that is like packed yeah. into this entire, mm. I, I think it's one of the best. Um, I... I mean, I love every single episode of this arc. Obviously, um, no, I, I was going to say, obviously, the, the last episode is the best, but I was like, no, hang on a second. They're all really good for different <laughs> reasons. Episode eight, I think it haunts me. <laughs> like, yeah. I think about him because he doesn't say there's no there's no dialogue about how he's like freaking out. It's just on his face. Like, he's just yeah. fully dissociated with the entire thing. He's just sitting there like, what the fuck <laughs> it's like that, it, that it, and it just plays out on his face you're just introduced to this place the horrificness of it all all the rules um the floor the the the, or the guards and, and all this sort of stuff and it just it everything plays on him uh it, glassy eyed yeah. and and like what the, what the fuck has just happened um, but it shows, I mean, it must show like as to how long he's been there as well. The fact that Andor walks in and he's already figured out this, 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 this. They're not listening. They're not listening to us. We can talk about whatever we want. They don't care. We're just here to build this thing for them. And that is it. We're nothing. And 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 Kino's just like, yeah, just shut up, right? I'm out in I'm out in 60 days or whatever it is. Like, leave me alone. And and 
and yeah and, and then as you say like yeah as soon as the re you know it's probably something Kino's always known but now that he can't deny it it's been mm. said in front of Andor yeah. as well everything that Cassian has been saying this whole time it's now been confirmed by someone else in front of Cassian mm. and Kino yeah and and Circus just delivers it yeah. like how many guards and just that little beat never more than 12 yeah. I can't. I was like, I was like, I have to wait a week. I have to wait a week. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this to us? <laughs> I was, I was quite fortunate in that when I started watching it, episode ten had come out, so I yeah, was yeah, able yeah. to go straight from that into it. But I, I had to sit and bask in that moment because it was so well set up, mm-hmm. so well executed by the end. Because it's like that. Th- these arcs are such beautiful, like three act stories. Basically, you've got the yeah. first episode, which is the setup, and then you kind of have the way that things change and then you have the conclusion by the end right yeah um and having that sort of anxiety inducing middle episode where he's like nobody's fucking listening and you have you get to watch andy circus grapple with the reality of the situation as as his like perfectly ordered world starts to fall mm. apart around him mm. poor yeah. Ola. <laughs> yeah oh, oh man don't don't it's so like... sad um, but then I also what I really love about this arc as well is is um, is is the mirroring to the Thirteenth Amendment as well in yep. America. You know the fact that the Thirteenth Amendment uh, outlaws slavery except if you are if you are detained and put in prison mm-hmm. and then you get put to work and and the fact that you know once you've been in prison once you've been incarcerated if you make it out the the, the like the percentage of prisoners that go back into prison mm-hmm. and this just goes and I love that this just goes. We well, don't even make it out. You, you just go straight back in. You just, just go to another yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that was. The, I think that was that was the huge thing was that it, they. I think it's not that they they try not to put you on another floor. It's just that that's what happened in this one, and yes, it got around yeah. enough that they had to kill everybody. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm assuming. Because uh, am I right in remembering that when? Cassian arrives we see that it's not just that facility there are other facilities mm, next yeah because they, they 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 sent them off to a, a whole bunch of different places and he yeah, got yeah, sent yeah. that one because he was yeah. designated that he could do labor was basically yes it. yes of course yeah, yeah. Oh, oh it was just everything about it my god and then yeah and then just the actual prison escape was just thrilling just so thrilling and I was in tears because I can't lie like I'm gonna get a little deep right now but yeah. for a long time I have felt here in the UK we need a French revolution you know we need to just <laughs> <Mood. laughs> barri- barricade the streets around Downing Street and just sit there and just and 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 I think it just speaks so much truth to power the fact that you know like how many guards are there never more than 12 well great because there's 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 80 of us in this room so that's easy and mm. and it, it does it just speaks truth to the power that we the people actually have you know that there are more of us and i've always said that and it probably goes for a lot of countries but i'm specifically here in the uk because i know it that if the working class actually came together and we stopped allowing ourselves to be divided mm. we could change everything mm-hmm. everything well and i think that's one of the things that the show does really well is that it shows the especially in those scenes with Saw where they point out the consistent infighting when it comes to um, yeah. it's especially I mean it, it doesn't call them leftist politics in this but it is leftist politics basically mm. um, nobody can decide on a course of action because some people decide that this thing is too extreme or this thing's not extreme enough and all this and then you have everybody yelling at each other and it's like that's what they want <laughs> <The whole laughs> yeah. point, they want that keeping us in that circle keeping us in that circle yeah Ah, oh, ah, oh, it's just ah, yeah, it's it's stunning. <laughs> it's stunningly good. Then it, you have been quiet for a while. I want your thoughts. Um, prison arc. No, I mean, <laughs> look, I um, because like the thing we didn't talk about, which I, I mean, we we kind of have to talk about, is Luther's speech at the end. Yes, because mm. we definitely have talked about that. But before that, um, I just want to talk about the end of episode nine because mm. that, did that wreck me? <laughs> um, just like the whole like the kind of like combination of um. Olaf's death, which, like, again, speaking back to Nemex thing, it's just like you know, sometimes a per, you know a person mm. just dies of a stroke, and yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just sudden yeah. and it happens, and then they're gone. And like the fact that we got you know 
a character getting euthanized on a Disney Plus show <laughs> in you know, Star Wars. I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah. this is so yeah. fucking intense. Um, but it's like, that's what I love about the show. It's like, they're not afraid to like actually dig into, you know, something mm-hmm. deeper and something more real. Um, so all of that was fantastic. And I love that that's the final push that Kino needed to actually like, you know, snap out of it and go, okay, fine, I'm going to help, you know, this prison break. Um, so I thought that that whole kind of like chunk of the episode at the end was fantastic. Um, but yeah, Luthen's speech. Luthen's I mean, speech, man. Because like, I mean, I love that everybody is just like lashed onto it because it's so good. It's probably my favorite speech in the in the entire series because mm. it's just like it's just like poetry. It like, is. Like yeah. I've read it so many times and it just reads yeah. so beautifully. Mm. Like even yeah. like it, it, Stellan Starsgard like delivers it so incredibly well. But like the writing in it in and of itself is so oh yeah on point um, that it is just like oh of course. This yeah. is stunning. <laughs> yeah. Just, and his I mean, delivery I, I, is, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, the way that, like, because like, I knew that the speech was going to go with him saying everything, but the build up to it was so good. And then he says it and it's punctuated with the echo, and it just gives me chills every time. I'm like, the fuck, that's so good. Just yeah. the way that he says everything. Um, but, yeah, I, I loved that entire sequence because you never know, like, you know, you don't really know what's going on with yeah. him and, and the um, ISB agent. And then you finally figure it out, and it's like, oh, shit. Um, mm. Just all of that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, oh, brilliant. Just just S tier writing. <laughs> just so good. <laughs> but this it's, is it. And like so in that good. delivery, he's like, he's so still that you can tell these thoughts go through his mind 24 7 on yeah. repeat. It never mm-hmm. stops. He know, like, you know, I mean, we know that we know that I know that we know that he knows what he's sacrificed. Mm. But you know, the, because he could he could be like trying to find oh I did this and I did this, which is not really great for screen acting, but but it, yeah, he's just he's just point his eyes are just fixed and he's just it's like it's it's there, Lonnie. It's there the whole time, Lonnie. So yeah. you're still my guy, mate. You're still in there. Go yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh my God. nobody gets out of this. I need a hero. You need to be it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get a choice in the matter. But I just love the, the depth of the writing to be like, you know, this is what it actually means to, you know, sacrifice yeah. everything for a cause like this, you know, because like, you know, it, you know, obviously like the original trilogy still works fantastically. And like, you know, it's nice to see things on the macro scale, but to like zoom in this closely to be like, this is what it actually means to start a, a movement like this. You know, like yeah. you don't get like, you know, someone like Luthen doesn't get to, you know, be happy essentially and to, you know, Wait, it's, make connections. Yeah. It, it's people. like, I really like the fact that if you compare this to, the original trilogy it is sort of like yeah normal people don't just get to wave around a magic wand and make everything better <laughs> um there's there's a lot of work and sacrifice and we don't just get to like we have to try and that's yeah. like, we gotta try we don't just turn up first day on the job and blow up something huge because all that <laughs> works been done for you already <laughs> not discrediting everything that looks skywalker does in the, in the original trilogy it's just there was a lot of stuff that went in before yeah yeah. Yeah. Shall we talk about Marva's funeral? Oh, oh my god. Cuz I I one of so I love the fact that that episode afterwards is so quiet. Cuz mm. I think it, it and it's been pointed out a couple of times online and I love the way that somebody put this it's that death is very quiet. And we don't need to see Marva dying cuz it just sort of it, like everybody else who slipped away in in the show it just she slipped away and she was the um yeah. uh, but her the effects of her death are, are the things that are felt throughout the rest of these two episodes i loved watching i spent the entirety of that narkina up going but but nemec's manifesto is still stuck on <laughs> <laughs> so i was so happy when he went back for it like i yeah. was like i knew he had to but it was a very satisfying moment for me it was, I was like oh thank god <laughs> good so glad that that's um the case um, and let's put it out there, the fucking robot. I never thought I'm gonna cry because the robot is depressed. Was I? What are you doing? <laughs> and the fact is that they care that he's not okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm. mm-hmm. okay, stop it. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, shut up. Mm-hmm. I want to. Oh my god done i was done Wait, I, I died. Think this is now the best time to, to uh give a shout out to brasso who i think is probably oh, one God. of the best people in the galaxy 
He's king just shares. wonderful. He just is a, a king. Guy. He's just so kind. Like mm-hmm. he all, he shows up for people, even yeah. And if he shows up for B, he shows up for he shows up for Cassian. When yeah. Cassian turns up in that first episode, goes, "Hey, we hung out last night." He's like, "Oh, oh yeah, instantly." <laughs> I love the writing yeah. as well. It's just like he just instantly gets on board. It's like you don't yeah. have to explain it to the audience. It's just like, yeah, he just gets it. Yeah. It's yeah. Fantastic. But then also can destroy stormtroopers with a brick. So there's Mom, yes. <laughs> yes. Satisfying. Of them. It's like, yes. <laughs> Which is just great. Been so proud. It's, it's great. It's great. Um uh, one th- I I will uh, start this with saying that my brother is is, you know, is, is like not really affected by a TV show or a, or a movie mm. or anything. Like you know, he enjoys it and watches and and has thoughts on it and whatnot. Mm. And it's like you know, he watched the final episode before I could watch it. So I was like, okay, am I gonna cry? I don't think you're gonna cry. And I was like, it's not a good episode. Then <laughs> why not <I> cry? <laughs> and I literally, I came home. Uh, I sat down. I put on the last episode. And like I don't know, ten or fifteen minutes in, I was already crying, and I was like, "What are you talking was about?" It, <laughs> okay, okay, but like, was it was it the 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 Marvel's final words to for, for Cassian? Yeah, of course that it was. got me. I I was I was I mean I didn't like, cry, but I was re- it really moved me. Yeah, especially just the just the sentiment of I love him more than anything he could ever do mm-hmm. wrong. <sighs> Yeah, Just, yeah. What a line! What a line! With that kind of juxtaposed, well, not juxtaposed, but like alongside her, um, uh, Cassian in episode seven, being like, "I'm just gonna worry about you the whole time," and she goes, "That's just yeah. love. Nothing you can do about that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do I deal with this? It's so good. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I was like, I don't know what my brother was talking about, but I was like, <laughs> destroy me! Like the last episode, we should destroy me. <laughs> Yes, uh, my God, it's like everything. The whole build up, uh, how they let them uh, do the whole uh, funeral, but not at the time that they wanted, and then they then still they were like, "Fuck it, we're doing it anyway." And and I was like, you know, the whole build up of the episode is like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh. But can we can we can we even just like talk about that little moment when the two parade bands they met? And then they yep. just turned, yep. and I just went. Motion. I was like, Whoa. every so okay. I've watched it once, but I've heard that music twice yeah. in the house when I'm not in the room because my parents have watched it, and then my bron- my younger brother watched it both times, like the, all three times watching it, and those two times where I wasn't watching it, but I just heard the music. Mm. I felt something shift in me. Like, yeah, it is such a moment in in the, just in the because it, it's like it's such a slow march, and yeah. then quietly and then it the tempo changes and it, it they yeah. start moving and it's like <laughs> yeah yeah and all the imps are just like form up form up <laughs> and it's like they're just marching bro chill they're just marching <laughs> again another thing that's like incredibly um that that is taken out of real life like that it's like it's so it's it's not subtle but it's important that it was really not subtle you know yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah, and then and then when Marva's speech comes, another oh, again. fantastic. Uh that was the moment when I cried because I was like, "Yeah, yeah I just, yeah, 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 I yeah. just really, really, really moved by that." Want well. to, I was like, "I want to fight. I want to fight with y'all. Let's go. Yep, Let's yeah, go." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like goosebumps everywhere. everywhere goosebumps uh, and you were just like, you, yeah, and you were just waiting. Like, what's going to be that that final breaking point? What is what is going to be? Yeah. yeah. Was yeah, I, and and you just oh, I love that it was I love that it was B getting tossed. I love yeah. that because like, it was it, on the one hand you've got like oh she he's clearly trying to shut up Marva, but it was it was B specifically getting thrown over. Brazzo was like nah, throw him down, man. <laughs> I and a bit out of context, but uh, how long did it take you all to realize who Marva was? Like who's the actress? Oh no! Yeah, I got sure. that Oh no! Straight away, yeah. Oh, straight yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think we were on the third episode or, or fourth, and I was like, oh, she just looks so familiar. Like, why do I know her? <laughs> and I literally I think... had to go and check, and I was like, oh shit! I yeah. think I... only because I saw I've she's been in sort of public consciousness for me in terms of she was in Killing Eve that yeah, and, yeah. The, and 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 the, that um that that was the only if I hadn't seen her in anything since like Harry Potter. 
yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I would have put those two together because I, I don't, took me a while I don't to put think I've seen together. her since then. So that's why I was like, why are you so familiar? So she gets to be like have her actual accent, which I love. So it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no, she is. She's so she's good. fantastic. <laughs> so freaking good. Like, you know, you know, we haven't talked about Bix. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> a little bit of Bix. Who wants to hear what they used as the sound to torture her? Because I was like, I'm saying not. I was this like, you know, got some sick and twisted curiosity, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) You. Really, it's the screams of children, isn't it? Dying children. (laughs) I, I was like, oh, I, I don't hear it. Like, but (laughs) yeah, here, look. Katie knows this. I think you guys know it too. There's this trend going on in TikTok, like, you know, uh, saying that um, uh, the love you are hoping for is is the love truth that you like in movies and, and books. And I was like, oh my God, like the dying other half is my love truth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, those Maybe. are the only romantic movies that I like where someone is dying. Like, you know, it's like, uh, so... Don't be surprised that I am interested to hear what she was hearing. I know it's twisted. It's the little devil on my back, okay? I'm like, fine. So it's that's just not, me. That's not let's let devil. it go. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's let it go. I, everything that happened to uh, Bix was um, uh, horrific. Awful. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. awful. And, oh God, I mean, she's so bright at the beginning of the season. And by the end, she's so, like, ruined. Mm-hmm. And I'm I I can't decide what I want for her in that second season because on the one hand it's been pointed out that the the way that Cassian left them he might not see them again mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um uh and I <laughs> oh, <enough>. fuck <laughs> oh god no <laughs> um but it's like I I don't know what would be the most like narratively satisfying thing for her because I I understand the she kind of exists to be as, as like a narrative um thing i guess um it, she it kind of exists to be something somebody entirely who was close to Cassian who got absolutely ruined by the empire mm. and i don't and and the kind of the empathetic part of me wants her to be able to recover but the one who the part of me that understands how story works recognizes that her not recovering just about as powerful yeah yeah which sucks but like it it it, it it's it, it sits as something very very important that could um be very resonant within uh the rest of the storytelling so i i really don't know what i want for i just wanted to point out that um at the i can't remember the, the name of the actress who plays her but she was stunning throughout the oh, entire thing i really just really had it up as well yeah. Is okay. it Ad- Adria? Adria and Jora? Something like was... that, yeah. I literally just had it up. I was just looking. Adria, Jora, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I just, I wanted to give a shout out to her because I think she was... But it's, amazing. it's so with like Bix's, what ha- with Bix's arc and what happens to her, and as we've already said about Cassian being taken away, Clem being lynched in the street, like it's, it, it it's, I've, I've seen a lot of complaints online about its handling of, and was handling of minoritized race characters. I did see this, yeah. Of, yeah, and it and I think it kind of carries on in Bix, uh, and especially in the Aldani arc as well. The first two characters to die were were the two black characters. Yeah. So it's it it kind of has, you know, it, it's done it quite a bit. And then you know when I I was kind of thinking last night, I was like, oh, I wonder if we'll talk about who our favorite character is. And I was like, okay, who are the standout characters? And I kind of sat there and I was like, well, we've got Cassian, obviously. Mm. But after Cassian, we have Cyril, we have Kino, we have Dedra, we have. Luthan, we have Mon, and I was just like, oh, there's a bit of a pattern forming mm. with what's going on here. But then at the same time, I'm like, but but what Tony Gilroy has done and, and his writing team have done is that they have really, really reflected the world that we live in and the way that that a lot of, well, certainly Western fascism anyway, because, mm. you know, the, obviously fascism is not just in the in the U- Europe and the US, but yeah. um. You know, the way that he has kind of mirrored it in this sci-fi world, to have the characters still living and still standing on top compared to the characters that have fallen, it 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 does it, it might it might be a bit too much, but it does sort of sing true as well. And you know, you know, we we've lost the likes of Skeen and, and Nimek as well. So 
and 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 Kino has you know we don't know his fate so it kind of it's not just it's not all just happening one way uh, and, and another way the other so it, it, it does find a little bit of balance and especially as Cassian is is our main guy on top by the end but I think yeah it's it's just really in, I think what is interesting is is just how it reflects so well the world we're living in and and that the people that are affected more are minoritized race people especially in 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 the UK and the US um and then along with that people uh, just just the working class so you know, I mean, we don't know. I I can't remember what Kino's backstory is, what he was doing before he was incarcerated. I think the thing is, we don't know. That's, that's yeah. one of the most the, the most yeah. beautiful things about that prison arc is like the only conversation we get about what would what did you do to get in here is is um I think Melshi asks Cassian, it's like what did you do, and he goes I did nothing. He goes Yeah, there's been a lot of that, and that's all yeah. we get. That's like, all it we doesn't get. matter what all any of the prisoners did because even if yeah. they did do yeah. something wrong, that's not the point. Yeah. No, exactly. Exactly, and and yeah, so it's it, it it I can understand the 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 trepidation people have had with with the handling of minoritized race characters in here, but at the same time, I'm like it also does just sing very true. I, I I think for me personally, I I believe that the trepidation I felt about it was because of how reflective of real life it is. Yeah. Um. And 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 then it bleeds into my one negative of could a few more alien races have helped to just distance that a bit? Yeah. I think also we just <laughs> with the season two we could just have the other side of that in that we, we yeah. get to a point beyond it's like we've seen the horror of the empire now now we can see the the you know beginning of the downfall the beginning yeah. of the proper rebellion in in like because we've got Cassian who's decided to oh, and with that final scene where he's like lost everything and yeah. th- that moment where he's like kill me or take me in that he means that. Like the, yeah. he has nothing else. Like he, he he in that moment he does not know which way that's gonna go. And it's like, oh mm. Mm. I feel things. <laughs> <laughs> you got any thoughts there? Uh definitely. <laughs> I mean I'm gonna be honest. I'm totally gonna derail things because the only thing I wanna talk about is the fucking serial scene with Musk in episode eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Just the fucking scene of them talking. Look, I know yeah, we've had a serious discussion. And I respect everything that you guys just said, <laughs> but also, <laughs> where where is Andor? No, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. where is Andor? <laughs> the funniest fucking shit I've seen in Star Wars in a long time. Just these two idiots talking past each other. I I loved it so much. Uh, it's cringe. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it is cringe. But what... That's why it's great. <laughs> That's why it's, it's funny. cringe. <laughs> what makes it so much funnier as well is that up. we. We can we can all hear what Musk is saying and understand it, and it's yeah. just like, how are you not getting this, Cyril? <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, it was so funny because all Cyril wants is to know where Andor is. That's all. That's his entire character. It's just where is Andor? And then, Magic. yeah, <laughs> gets yelled at by his mom and then goes like hides in this room and just stares at a little picture of cat. <laughs> yeah, just eats cereal, l- huh? looking like this. He was money I mean, out of his mum's safe. It's so funny. This is the part where we talk about Cyril, because I mean, it was it was always going to happen. I mean, come on, we have to talk. I about honestly it. think he's fascinating, uh, and yeah. it, it plays a really interesting role. And I think, um, mm. again, I don't, I haven't looked up any of his bloody names. Um, the gentleman who plays him is um, oh yeah, Kyle, uh, Soller. Kyle Soller. Thank you. Um, I I just really think he's got an interesting and and sort of slightly magnetic presence because even though yeah. he's like he's 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 probably cringe. He's so pathetic. Yeah. Oh, that he's... scene when he shows up outside the building is just it's, brilliant. It's also terrifying because there's so it is terrifying. The whole thing. It's awful. It is so terrifying, but at the same time, it's like, my God, you're really like, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> he's... he feels for her in that moment because he is he stalked her, and that's crazy yeah, yeah. as hell. Because he turns up, it's like that conversation because I have some literally interrogating you, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> But then, speaking of him saving her in that last episode, led to one mm. of the most, like, honestly, like, stomach churning in a, the mm. most brilliant way moments uh, of uh, of the episode, where she's terrified, and he saved oh, yeah. her life, and he's so calm about it, especially yeah. compared to where he was in episode three when when Cassian tied him up and was going to oh, yeah. kill him. 
which was that he just like completely fell apart like a wet blanket. Um, <laughs> just like it, her like shaking in that sort of like th- there's two different there's so many different things going on in that scene. And I think it's fascinating. I'm really interested to see where that relationship goes in the next season because it's it's I, th- there was an interesting quote I saw from Tony Gilroy where he's like there's all that stuff of like being terrified and like being kind of scared of him. But there's also, and th- this is what he said, he said, um, uh, nobody's touched me in a really long time. That's what she was thinking. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> everything about it's, that is horrible. It's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I got tense and anxious with that scene because it, I mean, it really looked like they were about to kiss and I was like, oh yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It was going to be so- really weird, and it's, I, I'm glad it didn't happen because I was like, "It's going to yeah. take me out if they do." Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was cringing so hard during yeah, that horrible. scene. I was like, "Ah, I want it gone! Like, please let, just stop it." It's I really, awful. A really, really interesting post from somebody on Tumblr who was talking about how in these authoritative like spaces, in these like fascist spaces, there are like two types, different types of people. That there are people who actually want to be in control and the people who want to be controlled and there is that's the relationship like that, that's the that's where they exist in this space and it's all really toxic and that's very much the point and i think um there is going to be so much to digest and um chew on specifically in, in that relationship when we get more of it um yeah yeah all righty uh we <laughs> we went overdrive in ender <laughs> Look, I when you said you were like fifty minutes, I was like, "That's not going to happen." No, no, no. I was like, "At least she's an optimist." <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. Uh, oh well, it is what it is. But uh, let's uh, finish it off uh, with uh, with rating. Like, uh, how would you rate this first season, and what mm. are your hopes for season two? Just you know, in a in a few uh, sentences. Let's start with Tinnit. Um. Okay. I'm definitely going to give this a solid uh, 15 out of 10 because <laughs> I loved it. I mean, like, I I loved it. Thought it was incredible. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's everything I wanted out of I've wanted out of Star Wars. You know, Disney mm-hmm. Star Wars for like the longest time. Um, and for season two, I guess I just want more depth. I just want you know just like or at least like a consistent amount of depth with the characters and like you know intelligent writing, really beautiful shots, just like everything just to be like you know. More, just like on the same level, just <laughs> fantastic. That's all I want. Okay. Just more, yeah. just more. Yeah, yeah fair. Just give me more. Uh, <laughs> so fifteen uh, out of ten. Yes, I guess that's, we can work with that. No. Elliot, <laughs> I, I just have to say the word "more." I will never, in in the context of Star Wars, I will never hear properly again. I will always just picture Kylo Ren in The Last Jedi. More! More! more. 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 <laughs> Fair. Just, more. It's, it's, oh, it's just a great scene. Anyway, yep. um, what would I rate it? I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of unsure. I'm going to do a, an out of five star rating, and I think I'm going to go for a 4.75. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go there. <laughs> I, mean, I think because of Letterbox, I'm used to rating out of five now. So she keeps trying to get me to do ten out of ten ratings, and I don't like it. But I have to. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no, it's difficult. No, yeah. So a four point seven five, and I think that the point two five is just for uh, a few more alien races, which, as I said, would help just kind of us distance some of the real life stuff a bit, um, as poignant and, and as good as that real life stuff is. Uh, what would I hope for season two? I think season two, I want to see. Apparently, season two is going to span four years. Um, so yeah, I've been yeah, told. Yeah. Uh, build a uh, five, no, okay, so, five no, years. No, no, the whole series yeah. is five years. So we've right. got the first oh, year right, and the yeah. first season, and oh, then yeah, there's yeah. four years for the next season. Great, great. So, um, so I, I, I want to see what I was hoping to have seen in in this was was some of Cassian's spy missions for the rebellion. So that we could see, a, uh, I wanted to see a darker side of the rebellion. So I'm hoping season two will will do that a bit more because I think that's really interesting to have these morally grey good guys. And I mean, I think Andor probably steps over being morally grey a little bit at times. Yeah. His his cold blooded non mercy killings are fantastic. Um, so yes, yeah, so I just yeah, just just to see the rebellion come together a bit more. I think we we've done the micro. Let's let's shift into the macro a bit more. Yeah. 
I uh, think I entirely agree with Elliot and his his rating. But if you really want me to put it into a ten version, I'd call it nine point like nine five. <laughs> Just like the tiniest little margin. Tiniest like, bit, there are some yeah. things that need a little bit of work, but like. Yeah. In the way that anything ever needs a bit of work, because it's nothing is there is no such thing as a perfect piece of media. Even though I refer to the leftovers as a masterpiece, I'm sure there are things that are technically wrong with it. Um, it's still a masterpiece. This is also a masterpiece. And uh, watching this alongside, and then going very quickly into watching the bear, which highly recommend by the way, because Dennis was talking to me about it, and then uh, I couldn't help myself when I watched the whole thing. I don't understand how people don't like get how good tv is like <laughs> it, when it's so yeah. when it is that good it is like crack i'm like i the, 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 it set something off in my brain i'm like how is this not the only thing that people think about it is stunning when everything about it's it's literal magic on the screen and i think this very much is literal magic and so is the bear um uh for season two yeah i'm i'm with the guys i want more 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 <laughs> um, uh, and I want I would love to see more of an exploration of um, how Cassian being taken from his home like affects him in the long run because I think that's a really interesting and nuanced conversation to have just within the narrative um, in that he can absolutely have loved his uh, loved Clem and loved Marva and, and, and they've they clearly raised him incredibly well and loved him dearly but they took him from his home and his sister and like those two things can exist together. And I think if there's any show that's going to, that can play in that space, it's this one. Mm. So yeah. Mm. And probably just like a bit more Cassian. Like it's just a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be the one that says 9.5. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because of the thing that I mentioned before that I need more Cassian like that's that's mm-hmm. my only thing like uh, I loved all the story arcs but I need it just yes as you said a tiny bit, bit more, more. Just, yeah. just, just a little bit, bit. Just, just a little bit more <laughs> um, and uh, I agree with everything for season two but I will also say we gonna need uh, the story of how K2 soul is going to come in. So true. Oh, yeah. It will happen. I mean, it will happen. Yeah. yeah. It mm. needs to happen. And Alan Tudyk needs to be back. Otherwise, oh, yeah. it's not going to work. Well, like, we so, otherwise, yeah. I'm out. I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alan Tudyk. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, it, we'll, we'll definitely see K2. It I, would be I really think, nice to yeah. actually be introduced to, to everybody. I'd love to see more Bodhi. Um, because I remember oh. really him being my favorite when I watched the when I watched Rogue One, and uh, I I've mentioned this before. I had my issues with Rogue One, which I haven't watched again yet. I'm going to. My friend and I are going to hang out in a couple of weeks, and she was like, "We could watch Rogue One," so I'm putting it off until then. But yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it again. Um, to see if my criticism hold up, I feel like they probably do, but I feel like I might look a bit more favorably on it now as opposed to them and I did, um, back then. Can I just do like a real quick full circle moment? as we end this because the day i went to see rogue one was that it was it was january 1st 2017 and on that day i had literally the moment we were leaving the, the house i had just finished the black mirror episode shut up and dance which is a really horrific episode it's just it's just not fun in any way shape or form but the guy who plays the main character in that episode is none other than the same actor who plays nimic Oh, wow. and i didn't kind of realize this until afterwards because in my head now i associate him with the end of the fucking world but i was like mm. oh, the weird full circle <laughs> oh, there's a flat circle that's all okay fair, fair. That's all right uh so that was our end of review uh, with special guests uh, Thinneth and Elliot uh, please Ooh. check out Elliot's uh, channel uh, they're gonna put the link down uh, in the description, Luna Machatter, um, and uh, check out Tinneth uh, as he t- tweets a lot about movies, a lot of times in TV guess. shows uh, on Twitter. And, so definitely and his Instagram and his Instagram yeah. and everything. We're gonna put everything Which is in private, the description. Still... Is it? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, this was us. Uh, we're gonna be back with uh, Jeffrey Pierce. Uh, and, I should read uh, his book. <laughs> Big it's, it's, it, look, my copy just arrived, so I'm like, 
I have it. I just haven't sat down to read it yet. I have it. I swear. I'm going to read I it. I am definitely read it. We're going to have a lovely chat with him. Uh, and uh, here's a little secret that's going to be a very special episode as well. Do you reveal, reveal it now or, or during that episode? What do you think, Katie? I'm trying to think what the fuck you're talking about, mate. For fuck's sake. I guess it's gonna be we're gonna tell the guys in secret and then you're gonna find out when Jeffrey's episode hey. comes on. Uh oh, I mean wow. the viewers. Uh but yeah. Uh love you all. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment of what did you think about Endor. And watch it if you haven't. Yeah. Oh my god, please. It can't believe you watch this entire thing without watching the show, but like Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a good <laughs> yeah. idea. We've spoiled okay, everything. You know everything. <laughs> I lost Just... my mind when Baby Yoda showed up. <laughs> right? and, my and boy so Iron Man and so did I don't know <laughs> Captain America. Uh, but anyway uh, yeah this is us we love you all bye 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 bye